Hey guys, it's Kevin. Today we're going to talk about how to replace a pre-net for Epson ET15000. And uh, this video is shot in the lab, so there'll be some background noises. Okay, here's Abby. Hey guys, it's Abby here. I'm going to be explaining in this video how to take out the print head and replace it in this Epson ET15000. I am removing the screws from this long um, piece in front of the LCD panel up above it and I'm taking out one of the last screws there. When I go to lift it out, I see that it's actually surrounding the blue support system for the scanner. What you need to do is twist the blue support and when you twist it sideways, it will lift up and out and you can take that white front piece out and then when you want to put the blue support system back in, you just twist it, um, move it down, and then just lift it back up and it works itself back into um, place. Alright, so now that I have that out of the way, I have more access to the print head in the carriage. So here I'm working on taking off this spring. You move the blue lever um, towards you. I've actually found it was a lot easier to not even worry about using the dental tool I used my fingers and it was a lot easier to remove that spring now there's going to be a smaller screw here on the side of this top cover for the dampers and then there was a tab on the right side of this top cover and then when you lift up that tab you just have to pull right to the right side and i think i'm going to show up maybe a close-up of this piece here yeah, so there's the tab on the right, so lift up the tab and then pull directly to the right because there's this longer prong that fits into a hole. So that's how that top cover for the damper works. Once you get that off, there's going to be two screws on either side um, of that blue lever that holds down um, the tubes to the print head or to the dampers and everything. So remove those two screws and once you do that we'll loosen that up to take off of the dampers what i'm doing here now is i am detaching all four tubes from each damper and i still needed to remove the screw from under there and i lifted off the block the clear plastic if you pull the plastic piece to the right towards you it also releases the plastic here I just lifted it up. I didn't want all the ink to fall out, so make sure that your tubes are facing upwards. Then you can just pull the little tab at the top or towards the back of that damper of the carriage. Just pull that tab in towards you and lift up. So my finger, my index finger in the back pushes the tab in and lifts up. Push in and lift up. And that releases the damper from the print head. All right, and right now I'm working on this CR clip, the carriage clip, that's helping hold these FFC cables in and the smaller cables that reach behind the carriage and under. Here I use the dental tool. There's a smaller piece of the clip that you get behind and pull forward with your dental tool. And then on the top part, you push down. So when I get it off, I'll show a closer up of it here behind that smaller piece of the clip that kind of hangs out. That's where I'm putting my dental tool in to lift up from that tab area, basically loosening it. And then I push that top piece down to knock it out, basically, of the carriage. Not in a bad way, but in a good way. Once I have that carriage clip released, then I push on either side to release this damper holder. So you see where I'm pushing my two fingers, those are the tabs that need to be pushed in and that damper holder pushed up to release from out of the carriage. So here I've removed the, or twisted that blue um, scanner support so I could fit my drill um, inside of the carriage to take out the three screws that hold that print head down. It's easy for me to twist that support in and out and put it back as I need it instead of just taking the whole scanner off right away. That way I don't mess up any cables that I don't need to. As you can see I have it up and then I'll just twist it back in and put it down. When you twist it in like I said you go twist it and you can push it down a little bit, push it down once 
and push it down a second time and it closes all the way and then you just lift it back up and it's open completely so here I'm trying to push that bigger FFC cable from out of its little holder place behind that and for me it was just easy if I grabbed a little bit of a pliers or something just to grab the actual print head itself and lift it up out of the carriage just because it's a little stuck tight in there not in a bad way either but actually in a good way here's the print head and we will then go ahead and replace it so now we basically just want to follow our steps backwards again so we're going to go ahead and put the large ffc cable in i have the print head upside down because it's easier to do that way and then flip it and we're gonna let it sit back in there if you need you can get the pliers again um, and you can grab it and just situate it back down flat so it's lined up evenly to the printer and to the three screws and then I'm going to take the FFC cable again and lay it flat into its little hideaway spot on the side of the carriage so the dampers can fit in there evenly then I'm going to go ahead and put my three screws three print head screws so don't get those confused with any other screws you take out I'm going to go ahead and put my three print head screws back into the print head and then I got my damper holder and you'll see the two slots on either side that hold those holds that in so you want that straight which you'll find that is easy and here I'm just twisting again my support my blue support back in and lower it down once lower it down a second time it closes lift back up it's fully open now I'm sticking my dampers back in I got all four of them make sure that you put your dampers in the correct spot you can look at your ink tank on the side and it will tell you what order the colors go in so now I'm bringing back my ink tubes. Um, I took a bag off of it. I put a bag on it just in case the ink decided to spill. So you can always do that if you want to try to keep your workplace cleaner or ink from spilling inside of your printer. What I'm doing now is I'm reattaching all four tubes to the correct damper. Once I have that, I'm going to go ahead and take the two screws that I need to use to secure the tubes down into place. Again, I have to move my blue support for the scanner to get my drill to fit in there. That's okay though. For me, it was easier, like I said in the beginning, to not take the scanner off just because I don't like chancing of breaking any hinges on the scanner if I don't have to. There's one, two screws in here. Once I have that, I'll go ahead and put the blue support back in there for the scanner and then close it down once, close it down twice, and lift back up all the way open. Then I'll go ahead and work on getting this plastic piece to the plastic guard to the tubes to stay down in place over the tubes all right so once we got that then i'm going to go ahead and put the cover on top of the dampers so the shorter tab pieces will go towards the back the rail of the printer and then i'll put in the really small screw and then to the right side of that damper cover. Now I'm going to pat, to put my carriage clip back in there. So again, remember we have that one clip on the side and to put, to take it out I had to push down. So at this time now I'm putting it back. I want to try to line it back up and push upwards to lock it in place. I'm going to put my spring on there when you're putting the spring on or taking it off you want that blue lever to be facing towards you so i'm having it facing towards me i'm using my hand to put the spring on and then push it away t from me towards the um, frame of the printer and that's how we change it happy printing